Insider. Welcome to Dave TV for the 29th of January 2016. Not a lot to talk about. You know, I mean, yeah, we had the big blizzard. You can see the rains over here. Pretty much plowed out. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. I have to say, overall, I thought the coverage of it was pretty good. Um, you know, it is somewhat amazing that a week before a storm hits, or before the storm is even formed, that computer models are already predicting it and accurately. You know, I, I always have this thing where I would like to see uh, you know, totally fall on their face. You know, the weather guys, you know, like they predict a two foot snow and we get three inches. I think that would be so friggin' funny. And it did occasionally happen in the past, but it really seems like where well, these fancy uh, computer prediction things, things are pretty good. You know, it was about Monday or Tuesday of last week that they were predicting this storm, and they were saying it could be a foot or more, you know? And then Friday comes along, and it starts to snow, and damn right, they're, they're right on the money. So, I have to say, as much as I'd like to see them fail, <laughs> You gotta say, you know, the last couple years they've been pretty right on the money. I'm not talking about anybody specifically. You know, oh, Doug Kemmerer has better forecast than Topper Shutt or Sue Palka or the Capital Weather Gang or WGOP. They all get their damn information from the same various sources, the National Weather Service, etc. You know, to say, oh, well, you know, this per one weather... Ca I, I saw Channel 9. I thought they were kind of funny too, you know, he's more accurate than the others. I mean, seriously, come on. I mean, Topper's a good weather dude, but he gets his weather from the same place everybody else does, and they just put it all together. Whether they hype it, whether they don't hype it, whether, you know, eh, everybody more or less was pretty well right on the money with this storm. You know, we got, we got here, here, cleaning up here, but we got about 30 inches here in western Fairfax County. And it got a little more to the west and a little less to the east, and that's pretty much what they were predicting. Um, but, hey, what do you know? Not too much media news going on out there. I guess the biggest thing affecting me at the moment is the 98.3, you know. Uh, the, the Gamut is this wonderful little radio station that plays this eclectic mix of pop, soul, and rock, and whatever. It's run by a guy named Dave Kolasar who's the, uh, one of the engineers there at Hubbard, Hubbard's uh, Washington Cluster, WTOP specifically. And WTOP, um, Hubbard has a bunch of signals they don't quite know what to do with. You know, they have this 104.5 repeater there, or uh, low power signal there in Sterling, and they got 820 up there in Frederick, and they don't quite know what to do with them. They have some extra channels on their HD digital. so. They let Dave just program this service called the Gamut. It's quite good. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy, bizarre mix of whatever. You know, you'll have Frank Sinatra up against Nine Inch Nails, up against Patsy Cline, up against, uh, you know, I don't know, a New Order, you know, just a huge, crazy mix of stuff. Well, anyway, there's a local guy who's been running these translators, and he's just started up a 98.3 here in the Reston area at Great Falls, and he's... He's applied to move it to uh, Bethesda, 250 watts, and he's put the gamut on it. So if, if he can move it to Bethesda, that would give it a good signal. You know, it probably has a 10 or 15 mile range uh, for the gamut. So, you know, right now you can hear him uh, uh, broadcast wise on 104.5 out of Sterling, which is great for Western Fairfax, Southern Montgomery and Eastern Loudoun. But on 98.3, that's going to give the gamut a, a decent inside the beltway signal to a lot of places, including the district. Okay, some other big news is more of a national thing. The Federal Communications Commission is looking at passing some regs that would allow uh, cable subscribers to buy their own boxes. You could go to Best Buy or Amazon or wherever and buy your cable box. You'd spend maybe a couple hundred bucks for it. And then you could then go to your cable company and they give you a little card or something, stick it in, and then you could get access to their service. But the, the key is you wouldn't need to lease that box from the cable company. You know, cable. there was an article the other day that said that uh, 
the average cable subscriber in America pays $231 a month, or a year, a month, a year to rent their cable box. Okay, well that's a year. Now, in another year, that's another $231. In another year, that's another $231. So in three years, you're talking about seven or $800. You're paying just to rent this cable box. Now, the cable box probably costs the cable company somewhere in the neighborhood of $50 to $100 wholesale, and they're renting it out to you for, you know, $231 a year on average, and that's one cable box. If you have multiple outlets, you may have multiple cable boxes. So you're into it for the cable company for a lot of money. I'm, you know, it's hard walking around here today because you know, have these little pathways are closed. But anyway, it is an effing ripoff. And I've gotten, and so the FCC is going to be passing, hopefully, a regulation that would say, hey, you know, cable companies now have to make their services available to those people that have private or, per, you know, purchase their own cable boxes. So that would be a huge savings to a lot of people. And of course, these cable companies like Comcast and Verizon Fios are probably screaming bloody murder because it's a huge amount of income they might be losing. But the hell with it. I think it's a great thing. So. Hopefully that will pass, the FCC. The other thing that really rips me about the cable companies, and one reason why I cancel my cable TV service, is this thing called an HD technology fee that Comcast passes on. It's $10 a month. And that's if you get an, if you get an HD service through your cable box. You know, that's local channels, whatever. If you have a cable box capable of receiving HD signals, which are standard TV signals today, it's nothing special. I mean, all the damn TV stations, that's their regular signal is HD. Everybody's broadcasting HD widescreen programming. That's the standard. And yet they feel an obligation to charge everybody $10 extra to receive the special service, which is the standard service. And they do it because they can. It's $10 for every, you know, who doesn't get HD service? I mean, we, you know, oh, I've got to just have a... It's ridiculous. Almost everybody gets HD service because you got a flat screen HD TV is the standard. And they pay that extra. It's at $10. So how many millions of cable subscribers does Comcast have? Multiply that by $10 a month or $120 a year. And it's just another one of those rip-off fees that cable companies get away with. So they just, they literally have these rip-off fees, like, you know, the rental for the cable boxes and the HD technology fees and everything else. That's just extra ways to pad their own income. And it's crooked and it's rotten and it should be stopped. And I would like to see, and I'm glad to see the FCC at least coming down on the cable box thing. So that's a good thing. All right, folks. And we just had also big news that the, uh, Washington Post just had their official opening ceremony for their new facility there. Franklin Square, I think it is. They moved, uh, whatever. whoop de doo de doo <laughs> I don't know. Good luck. Good luck with that. Um, I still like the Washington Post. I didn't get, you know, we had the big snowfall. I didn't get the Saturday, the Sunday, the Monday, or the Tuesday editions of the Washington Post. And, you know, they're, they're not refunding me yet. They didn't bring the, those papers out at all. So I'm not going to let it, I'm not going to, I'm just going to let it slide because I did manage to see everything on their website. They have that e-replica thing, but you can actually look at what the pages look like. But anyway, so that's that. Live and let live. All right, folks, that's all I'm going to do today. Dave TV for the 29th of January 2016. I'm going to Starbucks for a little uh, warmth and comfort. Adios, amigos.